we don't know why, but the incubator malfunctioned and it uh, killed every single snake inside of it. October Chicago Tinley Show uh, 2018 was where this started for Metcalf Reptiles. For Garrett Hartle at Reach Out Reptiles, this started 14 years ago. This guy has been trying to get Krampus together for 14 years and has not been able to do it to, until uh, about two years ago. Fall of 2018, I was approached by uh, someone who had a Karampa, and honestly, I did not know much about the locality. I knew the name, but didn't know much because honestly, there wasn't that much to know because of how few of animals that were out there. And uh, so I was like, you know, I don't, I don't know of anyone who has a. He had a female, and I was like, I don't know anyone who has a male. Uh, let me talk to someone who, if if there is one available, this guy would know, and it was Garrett Hartle, obviously. And uh, so I went over to him at the, at the end of the show and I asked him, I said, hey, do you know anything about Karampas? He's like, well, oh, no, nothing to know. I'm like, what do you mean there's nothing to know? He's like, they almost don't exist. There's only a few adults left in the U.S. I was like, I got a female. And it's pretty funny because immediately when he literally kicked me, he says, get out of here, you little punk. Because he thought I was making fun of him, but I didn't know the backstory about how he had a couple of deals um, of getting two different Karampas and they both fell through. So we ended up, I ended up uh, purchasing this female from this guy because he decided that he wanted to sell her and I said I would buy her. And uh, what I did was, this is actually a week after Tinley, and uh, so I went and picked the snake up and pulled an all-nighter. I picked it up at 8 p.m and then uh, went 16, uh, not quite 16 hours, 15 hours, all the way out to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, got, got there uh, the next morning, and uh, through another story, Garrett was able to get a male Karampa. Tried breeding her, our female slugged out. That was pretty disappointing. Um, we just didn't get the male in in time, but it was also very encouraging, honestly, because she laid a full clutch, um, they were all slugs, unfortunately, but, I mean, everything went well. She didn't get egg-bound, no complications, so that was really encouraging, and we got her on a cycle. Fall of 2019, um, well, not fall of 2019, I think it was, sp yeah, it was spring of 2020, actually, uh, when she laid a fertile clutch of eggs, which was really encouraging. Um, and Garrett had had a previous clutch uh, three months before um, that got laid by a, a different female that he was working with someone that with. And, uh, but anyway, so our female laid eggs, really encouraging. Um, she did great, 13 fertiles, uh, two infertiles. So she laid 15 eggs total, but 13 fertile. Uh, one of them went bad pretty early, so we had 12 eggs to work with. And um, this was just, my goodness, today is Monday, May 4th. Garrett called me on, what day was it? It was Friday. Uh, Friday morning I talked to him early in the morning there's still no eggs hatching so uh, and I ended up spending some time in prayer that morning just over the animals and he called me about 30 minutes later after I was praying and he goes hey man they're hatching and it was so exciting I was so excited I'm like yes we finally did it we're hatching Karampas and um, so he FaceTimed me when he got back to his facility and uh, he FaceTimed me while he cut the eggs open he was cutting these things open he goes dude I think we got an anery. I'm like yeah, uh, you said that in the last clutch. I'll, I'll clutch. I'll believe that when you're convinced. And uh, this egg, this snake was like coming out of the egg already. And he grabbed a light and he's looking at it with someone else who was at a facility and goes, Aaron, we got an anery, 100%. Oh my gosh, you guys, Karampas are coming out. No one anery and anery. And then over here, another anery. Oh. right there was like wow how blessed is that that's so awesome so all 12 of them they cut all open they all look great super super excited um, and so I decided I'm gonna drive out to Pennsylvania especially with the pandemic with uh, COVID-19 going on we ain't shipping these Karampas so I'm gonna drive out to Pennsylvania per uh, personally um, so this morning at 7.30 a.m., hopped on the road. Right now it's 1 a.m. We just pulled into uh, Pittsburgh. And um, about 10 minutes after I hopped on the road, I get a call from Garrett. And uh, me, I could tell something was wrong. And, uh, I got a call from Garrett this morning. And 
we don't know why, but the incubator malfunctioned and it uh, killed every single snake inside of it. Uh, only five of the Krampas, well, thankfully five of the Krampas were out already, but we lost seven of them, uh, and then Garrett lost three or four or five full clutches of eggs in there. So, still processing this, just, just found out this news, just got off the phone with him. Tough thing, really is. He walked across his room, flipped his camera around, and uh, and there was a box open in the incubator, and there was a pile of dead snakes. And I went, oh, those are Karampas. And uh, and he and he was like, "Yep, those are our Karampas." I was honestly pretty, pretty speechless. I was just obviously a lot of emotion. Um, I don't have hardly as much work as Garrett is, but I still got two years um, and a lot of uh, hope for these for the Karampa project. And obviously, it's exciting, especially when you get anneries. And then now, all of a sudden, I just know a bunch of our Karampas are dead. Sunday morning. I mean, I just when you're on baby watch, you just wake up early, <laughs> go down and check everything all the time. Yeah. So I I just came down here. I was like, oh my gosh. And so I ran downstairs and seeing the Karampas just all piled on top of each other. We brought them into this world and here we just let them die. That That's the hardest part. Like, none of these snakes would be here, you know, in the wild or anything because we're the ones doing it. Yeah. It was just a perfect storm because we were moving setting up a new you know incubator area and uh normally the the heaters control themselves but I, I run them through a second thermostat for redundancy and that was moved to the new one and i was just dialing them in the temperatures and literally like after those hatched right behind them we had the reach streams line mm -hmm. pure calatoas which was for baby lars and desiree yeah and that's what's so hard breeding i did with forest fanning we did the breeding when Forrest was still with us. I'm more of like a big picture guy, you know, like, oh gosh. You know, I, I definitely care about each individual animal as an animal, but it's like, man, I was gonna establish this bloodline and do this thing with the fannings, which we can try again next year. Um, you know, the Karampas were like, oh, you know, they're so rare. Like they were hatched, they were ready. I could have like pulled them out of the eggs the night before and they'd have been fine, That's but what, too. I we don't do that. You wish, just let them come out on their yeah, own and I wish we somehow do it naturally. And just took the whole bin and put it somewhere else that was warm, something, I don't know. Like you just go back and think, I wish I did this. Yeah, it's easily that, preventable, it's just unexpected. Um, and honestly, uh, it hurts and, and it's difficult, but I was much more scared for Garrett because he lost four other Superdorf clutches in that incubator, all of them gone. And, uh, and that's just a big hit. That's a big hit for him. And so we were just pretty quiet um, trying to process some things. So we ended up just praying for, for a little bit. And then uh, we just both needed some time to just be quiet and process things. But um, spent the morning, honestly, just looking over the situation and uh, really being able to see how blessed we are and really get an attitude of gratitude towards this. I mean, I, I honestly don't feel like I deserve to be in the Karampa Project. This, this female was almost handed to me, basically. Um, just how things worked out, it, it was just a blessing. And uh, look, we bred a Karampa this year and we hatched babies and we got five of them. That's a huge success, you know? Yeah, we could have had 12, but we have five, which is really encouraging. Um, and so, really, I don't have anything to complain about. I'm really excited. Um, obviously, there's going to be some lessons learned, and I think this is going to take us farther than we would have had if these animals all survived, you know? Because from these situations, we learn a lot. Um, and it also gives you perspective on 
how to do things and uh, especially on just life and how frail it is and definitely um, helps me to get a better view um, of just gratitude um, and being really grateful for what I do have so that's where we're at now um, I'm gonna get a few hours of sleep and uh, go see Garrett in the morning and we are gonna do one day at a time and we're excited it was actually a little uh, surreal going a little bit like oh wow cool this is another snake um, but as I started to hold it and look at it more just the realization that this was part of the goal it was another big step in the process that we've been working towards over the last two years um, I was so grateful and so excited to see uh, one of the huge steps come to fruition in this in the Karampa project that we've been working on um, And it was so cool being able to see such a small little baby retic but to see how important it was to us and How much effort has gone into make that one little animal. It was pretty crazy If I haven't really even stopped to think and process it. I mean you've you've been here a couple days You've seen it. I just been like go 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 pictures phone calls all this kind of stuff but um yeah i don't know i ultimately i mean shoot two clutches of carampas in one year huge success yeah big huge deal success. to get five of them and then your female proved out head anery that's um, huge also i mean obviously my male too it's terrifying to have them there on the other hand they don't breed remotely so yeah you know um, but yeah, it is definitely good to to get some out, get those animals uh, heading out and into the public. And I think it's cool. But I don't know the way this season goes. It's funny when you when you write stuff down on paper. I mean, the Carampas. It's been it it was year fourteen when I finally hatched some mm -hmm. of me attempting to just to get a pair together. Extremely just blessed to be able to to work with them and everything and. I know, it's, it's pretty cool to be holding a captive bred Karampa. Finally. 14 years of work, two full clutches of snakes produced, and I have two captive bred females to show for it um, for an entire season's production. So, I mean, just how like ridiculously precious those things are. It's a shame that they become popular. You know, it's cool to, to bring light to them, but as long as everyone just wants them as pets, you know what I mean? And, and there's not really anything going back towards doing something to help the you know establish the population um i was glad that it worked out you know i mean like i i mean i got the pairs out to the people that we intended to we spread awesome. those out i still have a couple animals to show for myself and uh no i i appreciate your attitude i mean it it's life stuff mm -hmm. goes wrong i think everybody has stories of you know what i mean things they thought they were going to get and it's really all about expectations right you have yeah those super high expectations and then they're dashed but I appreciate your perspective on it and I am glad that we were able to get you a completely unrelated male to your female so that now mm -hmm. even if you're like no I hate you now Garrett we're not friends anymore you could just have your female back and still be the Karampas yeah. will be okay you'll have a separate bloodline you know and an anery boy just as mm -hmm. it's the most ridiculous trophy that a Superdorf breeder and, could ever and have that's, and that's what's crazy is when I put that thing in my hands for the first time I was like wow this is so cool these are pretty about five minutes later, I was just staring at him going, Oh my goodness, guys! This thing is addicting to look at! Yeah, I love it. Experiencing Anna. this newborn Karampa was incredible! They still and haven't shed dude, yet. They every minute that I handle one of these things, the more you go, Wow! There's nothing on planet Earth like this. The pattern, the personality. Look at how intelligent and inquisitive and aware yeah. this thing is of its surroundings i i mean so I've, cool. I've hatched a lot of super dwarves you have too pure locality super dwarves mm -hmm. these are really different i was surprised yes all in all i think a really successful season but certainly not without its ups and downs i mean that seems to be the way of it with the carampas anybody out there that did buy one of these carampas watch out <laughs> i mean they're fun but there's a weight to them you know there's a weight to having them, to owning them, I, I feel a, a tremendous sense of just responsibility. Even for me, it's exciting that that uh, we got you know a head anery male and a head anery female in there, and 
what a blessing that well, we actually got an the, Like, but I mean, the losing the captive bred babies is a tremendous tragedy and, and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, we have the adults. Mm -hmm. Still no guarantees with that. Yep. But, I mean, the opportunity remains to continue. Mm -hmm. It's just, these guys. I, I really want to see these things develop, and obviously Anna is going to be part of that. And I appreciate your partnership on the, on the project. And, John, thank you to you, too. Um, you know, that made these ones possible. It was a, it was a big deal. <sighs> we'll wait till next year. See if we can do it again. That's the plan. Yeah. Hey, we'll catch you guys next time. Times like this are tough. I know God is good, and I know He's got a plan to bring good from this because He will work all the things out together for good. And uh, I know one day I will look back on this and I'm like, wow, we changed a lot. That changed us uh, dramatically in our relationship and the way we do things or so on and so forth. But right now, it's honestly pretty tough to see.